Hey guys, Chris here with work to game and today I just wanted to start getting a little more excited about Anthem. And so I kind of spent the weekend just going out and trying to look for all the information that I know has kind of come out to this point and it's been trickled out over time but there was such a great fall and such a great Christmas with all the other games that we've been playing that I hadn't really had a chance to focus on 2018 and the game that is, is definitely near the top of my list for most excited about. Um, I'm kind of holding a couple spots for titles that haven't been confirmed yet that I just kind of somewhere deep inside hope come out uh, and will probably be let down by, but we'll see when we get to E3 this summer. Uh, so Anthem will be released in fall of 2018. That's really all we know. No specific date. So that could be like a late fall going into the Christmas rush. That could be, you know, kind of post E3, really big hype. When something comes out in December and they tell us about it in June, then that's a long time for a lot of speculation to take place. What platforms will it be on? PC, PlayStation, Xbox. It is confirmed that it will not be at Switch on the Switch at this time. Um, as we get a little further down and we talk about like some performance questions on it, that makes big. That makes sense to me. Um, there, it's it's. A workhorse uh, of a machine that can run this game and the switch just doesn't fall in that group so the PlayStation 4 Pro the Xbox one X this is what people are designing for now and there is a ton of power on those machines is this an MMO uh, we're not sure this honestly the definition of MMO has become very broad and so when you talk about things like division destiny um, being classified as MMOs because there are is a massive group online. Yes, there is a massive group online, but you're being tossed into different servers and things like that. Um, and ultimately, you spend the majority of your time in a world where there's only a handful of players in there with you, uh, as opposed to, wow, when you're in the main city, there's tons. Uh, Final Fantasy. And so, will it have a multiplayer aspect? We can pretty much guarantee yes. Um, they show it as having that. But to the degree that you would classify that, I don't know. Uh, will there be a beta? Yes. There's no way these days they're going to try a game without a beta. They get plenty burned with the things that they get wrong with a beta. We may even have two of them. Um, unfortunately, if I had to guess, I would say EA is probably going to gate that second one at least partially, at least part of the duration of it, um, behind pre-orders because that's... That's how gaming companies secure their investment. That's how they go back to investors and show that the game has promise when it can bring in a certain amount of revenue before it even goes to market. We had a rough year last year with pre-orders. Uh, so uh, I think they're gonna have to try to hold something like a beta over our heads to get anybody to make that jump anymore. Um, and I'll probably be sitting that beta out if that's really the case. Um, but that's just my speculation. But we know there will be a beta, uh, we just don't know when. Uh, will there be more news for this game? Well, that's the interesting thing about a fall timing, is that we get a lot of summer announcements. We get a handful of spring announcements, but if it doesn't make it into the sp any spring sort of announcement, then by the time we find out about it, it's going to be right up against us. So the advertising campaigns will already honestly be late in my mind. Uh, so I don't know how much firm information we're going to get without you already starting to see early access, um, big betas, streamers that get their hands on it, things like that. Uh, is is what is shown in the gameplay trailer real? Yes, everything that they've shown us, they showed interacting with friends and all that, they, they really have done a great job of making it feel real. That doesn't mean there won't be substantial changes from what we saw and what ends up being based on feedback, based on continued development, because the game is not done. Uh, so that's kind of a moving target. Why isn't there a 1080p uh, 60 frame option? Uh, honestly, this is a PS4 Pro question. Uh, so you've got the GPU, uh, GPU to run in 4K, and so I think a lot of people were frustrated. They they have said that you know there's there, it's all but confirmed that we're going to be getting a 4K option to this game, and a few sources are even going ahead and making that jump. Um, so the, the, the GPU is there, but that there's so much going on in the game with all these different things moving around and all these people moving that there's just a lot of updates. And so to keep the latency consistent across all players, they're going to have to keep that frame rate reduced. And that's something that we're going to see in traditional consoles until they make the leap all the way to being computers. And they've basically been there for a long time, but basically, not exactly. And so 
I think the Xbox One X could probably carry it at 60 frames, but are they going to try to support the Xbox One originals? If so, that's not going to carry 60 frames of this. And so if you're going to have any form of PvP, you're going to have to, or any form of progression or competition, you're, you're going to have to make sure that you can deliver a consistent frame rate to all people and that there is no advantage for having better hardware. Um, how many javelins are there? We know of three at this time. Uh, that doesn't mean there won't be more. Uh, I hope those won't be pay gated in any way, but we don't know. Uh, it feels like you know you have analysts going ahead and speculating that EA learned their lesson, but those are just analysts. Like EA has been pretty quiet on the matter, uh, so I don't I don't know. Um, will there be PvP? Uh, I would assume yes. I cannot imagine a game coming out with PvP. The question is, will it be worth it? Um, Destiny's PvP has always been one of the stronger sides of Destiny. Um, Halo is wonderful PvP, and um, like games like we've been playing Warframe lately, I, the PvP doesn't really do anything for me. Final Fantasy PvP is a little bit of an afterthought, and they're making that push right now, and that's a separate conversation Brian and I have, have had, and we're really excited for what this last year has brought us, and what this next year is going to bring us in the Final Fantasy world as far as PvP, but if you look at the total length of the franchise, PvP has never been their strong suit. Uh, so them bringing that up is more of bringing up that last piece up to the level that everything else is already at. And I would assume this game is going to have some form of PvP, um, but that has not been confirmed or shown yet. Uh, and the other side of that question is, what will the storyline be like? You know, I thought Destiny 2 had a very fun storyline. I was disappointed with how short it was. Um, I thought Halo had an incredible storyline, which was utterly unnecessary. I played the game for PvP, I had a blast in PvP, but if you haven't gone back and played the storyline, it was wonderful. Uh, so, an MMO type shooter that shifts itself towards PvP, even if that is the case, doesn't mean it can't have a great story. We'll just have to see, um, because some of these games really drop the ball on it, and some really deliver big. I've never enjoyed Call of Duty's main storyline, I don't even know why they include it. I don't personally need it, uh, I feel it could be a DLC that they sell separately and lower the price of the game. Uh, it just doesn't, it just doesn't do anything for me. Uh, how are they going to handle microtransactions and uh, microtransactions and loot boxes? As the final question, um, this is a big question. With EA, we don't know. They got burned last year pretty hard, and uh, I don't know what that means. I don't know. I don't know if they learned their lesson. I don't know that uh, they can't just see that as an oddity in the data because. They have other franchises that have always done very well with microtransactions, so to get burned on one franchise one time could just be a bad press cycle. And so, you know, it's not worth steering a ship that big towards something totally different if it really is just a weird point in the data set. And so I see how an analyst that doesn't play games and doesn't really care left or right could feel that. But I also feel that the outrage was really loud and really clear. And so... You know, they, they had a rough year last year when it came to microtransactions. They, they had a couple of titles get a lot of pushback. And so I would be interested in seeing kind of what what did they learn from it. Uh, I assume there will be microtransactions and loot boxes in it because we're already too far into the development cycle. And there is no way when this thing started that, that the game was not designed and funded with the long-term income possibility already in play. So if they are taking loot boxes out, the game is probably already over budget and probably already overdue and it's not done. So they are now losing money, right? Uh, so they're gonna have to keep it on its course. It's just a question of if there is adjustments that can be made, how creative are they being with those and how are they doing their best to make the adjustments this late in the game as much as possible. You, you can't wait until the last quarter or period of a game to change the way that your team plays. You just can't. That is not the time. You know, that's done in practice. That's done before the game. You can't literally wait until you're right in the last few minutes of the game and go, let's try something we've never done, practiced, or talked about. So they have built this team, developed this team, led this team with loot boxes in the intention. Uh, some form of microtransaction loot box, and maybe it was all cosmetics, maybe it wasn't. We don't know. We've never gotten to see it. 
Uh, so hopefully it wasn't that far off of what it needs to be and they can make that shift. I think overall the community across all titles has shown that loot boxes and microtransactions can be done in a way where people at least ignore them um, and there's not a bunch of outrage around them. And they can also be done in a way where the whole world seems to light on fire. So it's just a question of whether or not EA uh, understands the difference between those two and can steer towards one over the other. Uh, but with that said, that's kind of everything we know about Anthem that is confirmed or solidly uh, hinted at or shown to us in, in footage. So I would definitely love to know what you guys think in the comments below. What are you most excited about? Uh, are you disappointed by the late fall date? Do you think that we'll get to have our hands on it sooner than E3? That would be wonderful. Um, that's really it. My name's Chris with work to game Thank you guys so much for hanging out, and we'll see you next time. Hey, it's me. Thanks so much for watching this video. You should click over here to see more videos just like it, or you should click down here to check out our recent vlog. But you can also click somewhere down here below to hit the subscribe button, as well as check out our other info. Again, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.